Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of League Chat with the Stat. Guys, finally, we've dropped the hats. The merch is now available on Facebook shop. The, how do you get there? Go straight to Facebook, search League Chat with the Stat. If you're not already following, click on that shop icon. You'll find the two hats there, black and white, selling them for $25 each. Uh, be part of history, guys. Get onto it. We finally dropped it, which is exciting. Thank you for joining me on another great episode this week. I know there's been a lot of questions in regards to when I was going to be dropping those hats, but we're now we've, that we've dropped them, uh, they are now available to you. So very excited to be able to finally get that out for you guys. Just as a, and I really do appreciate your support uh, over the last year and a bit since we've done started the podcast, guys. A crazy round fourteen uh, that was just among us. Now I do have to say, it's made a lot of changes into the ladder as well as what's happened um, in regards to a lot of the results that went down this week. Let's get straight into it. We have a new leader. The Storm are now outright first, uh, 24 points. They're still, still tying with Panthers on 24 as well. Uh, the four and against is just a touch better. Uh, third and fourth, uh, Eagles are both, and Rabbitohs, 22 points each. Uh, fifth is Roosters on 20. Six um, is Sea Eagles with that win um, over the Cowboys, who are seventh on 14, and the Dragons sit eighth on 12 points. Um... Still on 12 points, uh, 9th, 10th, 11th with Sharks, Raiders, and Warriors. Uh, Titans, Tigers, and Knights sit on 10 points each. Uh, and the Broncos and the Dogs sit on 6 points. Now, guys, let me tell you what's crazy about this, right? So you've got Storm, who are now topping the Panthers, who have now suffered back-to-back losses. You've got the Eels and the Rabbitohs tied 3rd and 4th. There are 4 teams on 12, 3 teams on 10. And the two teams on six, Broncos and Bulldogs. But the crazy part about the Broncos and the Bulldogs is the fact that our for and against is obviously hopeless, but so is theirs. So they have put on 232 points, but conceded 436. We've put on only 162 points, but conceded 366. And the for and against differential is the exact same on minus 204 points. It's pretty crazy, considering the fact that now, if Broncos lose heavily and Bulldogs lose not as heavily for the next couple of weeks before Broncos head on to their bye, we won't be last anymore. That's pretty exciting, and I'll take that. Uh, I've, it's about time. I'm sick of looking at the Bulldogs being at the bottom. Um, but look, it is what it is, but I just thought that was the most interesting things from the ladder that I really wanted to get off my chest. All right, let's get straight into round 14. But before I do that, we've got to discuss State of Origin 1 and what a cracker game. New South Wales 50 defeating Queensland 6. That's one of the best performances I have ever seen from New South Wales. Unbelievable. I can't explain just how well they went in terms of, you know, their attack. Uh, what I loved the most was, you know, just how involved Tom Chaboyevich was. And you could see how he roamed across... You know, the whole field, um, especially in attack, dominating uh, Queensland in attack and being so unpredictable in what it was doing, that Tedesco didn't have much of an involvement. And I loved that. I loved how he just ran in, took control, you know, scored that try, ended up finishing on a hat-trick, you know, line break assist central, set up line break, set up tries. Um, that kick he put in for the troll was great, mate. How good was the troll? You know, if you look at all the, the players that were playing in Origin 1, you, you just... It's unbelievable, you know. You look at how the back five for New South Wales really stood up. Tedesco, again, just a, another great captain's knock. You know, you had Brian Toto on debut, two tries. You had Latrell, Trevojevic, just having a laugh in the back line. Um, you had Josh Adokai, who was relatively quiet, but still got involved where he can. Uh, the halves dominated. Lawai and Cleary were exceptional. Um, and our four-pack surprisingly really took it up to Queensland. You know, and I was very shocked, again, by the result. It wasn't an ex- a result that I was really expecting. Um, but just to see the, the talent that we have in our back line just really stood out for me. Now, Queensland, on the other hand, were really, really bad. 10 minutes in, they lost Christian Watch to a concussion. But there's one person that they were missing that they desperately need to get back. And that's Wayne Bennett. Anything that man touches turns to pure gold. And when you look at the side that he coached in 2020 uh, for game three, this was the team that beat New South Wales. By the way, I just I need to I need to just get make this right because Queensland actually beat New South Wales with an extremely, in a sense, depleted side. Let's remember the back line from last year. Corey Allen was at fullback, Edric Lee. And Valentine Holmes were the wingers. Brent Curley and Dan Gagai were the centre pairing. Corey Allen 
has been very mediocre this year for the Bulldogs, if not been very, very below average. Andrew Clear hasn't played one first grade game this year due to suffering from that injury. Brent Curley has been in and out of first grade in Queensland Cup due to calf and hamstring issues. And you look at the forward pack, you know, Jake Friend obviously gone into retirement, but they were missing Josh Papali'i, missing Lindsay Collins. This was a team that was very depleted last year that beat New South Wales. Yeah, we had a few injuries too. You know, we had, obviously, we had Gutho in the centres. We, we didn't have um, Tom Trebojevic. Um, in the halves, we had Cody Walker and Nathan Cleary. You know, we had Tyson Frizzell as well. They were Finuka, uh, Finuka and Nathan Brown. You know, a lot of players that were missing from the game one for this year. But let me just make the point that in a depleted side last year, Queensland beat us. And this year, having a almost full strength side, obviously they were missing, you know, likes of Ponga. Um, they had Bibbs coming off the bench. Uh, they had they too had their injury concerns as well. But that was just so bad. And if Queensland could beat us with such a depleted side last year, you'd think with the uh, players that they get this year, they would do something a bit better than what they pulled up in Townsville. I've got to say, it's very disappointing. And I just can't believe the impact of one man on the side. As I said, anything he touches just turns to gold. And, and Paul Green, in the press conference and then the day after on NRL 360, he just looks so clueless. He doesn't know how to get his team out of this rut. And they've got Munster and Cherry Evans, who are the Australian halves. You know, they've got Ponga, who's a freak. They've got Brimson, who's an animal. You know, they've got these players that really gag eye. You got It was really quiet. Latrell really made him, uh, really exposed him uh, in that game which was very, very odd to have a quiet game from Dan Gagai. Coates was no good. Felt was below average. Uh, only one or two of their forwards made over 100 metres. But yeah, New South Wales just dominated them in every facet. And look, I would love to see New South Wales go on and, and, and go on a clean sweep here, but I'm still very cautious of Queensland. I'm still very cautious with Queensland because game two at Suncorp Stadium is just going to be very, very tough. And they always aim up for those games at Suncorp. You know, the Queensland fans absolutely love it. And that's going to be a deciding factor. So, look, we give credit to New South Wales. You know, Queensland will be on garbage. New South Wales need to just, the, the players that are available, just need to remain um, healthy and out of any potential injuries or suspensions, you know, to be considered for Origin 2 to keep that same squad together. Just one thing I want to discuss on top of this is when Cam Munster came out and warned Jerome Law that, you know, Origin isn't the same as club football. And he was right. Except Jerome Luai absolutely destroyed him. And that's what I loved. You know, he came out and he was just fantastic. You know, you look in the second half, that break he made and then went through and then popped the ball to Latrell and then popped it on to Chaboyevich. You know, that break, you know, he fooled Cherry Evans, made him look like a goose. And it's just good to see, you know, these young kids, you know, like Jerome Luai and Brian Thornton in their debuts come out and just, you know, the boys from Mount Druid just come out and destroy. And I, it was really cool to watch. Um, but look, that, that's all I can say on that. Just was 50 defending Queensland 6. I'm excited for game 2. I don't think a score line will be the same as that, but let's just see what happens. Uh, Seagulls 50 defeated the Cowboys 18. Uh, the Cowboys got off to a very fast start, scored two tries in the opening 10 minutes, and then it just went downhill from there. You know, they really got off to that quick start because Martin Tapao in the first set dropped the ball, uh, which wasn't the start he was really looking for. And once they hit 10 nil or 12 nil, I was like, oh no. You know, no, no Tom Trebojevic being rested from Origin two nights before. And then, that's it. Something just clicked in the Sea Eagles. It was out 28-12 halftime. And it was just thinking, how? How did they get it so fluent? But everyone just was in sync. Everyone knew their role. I thought Ruben Garrick was just outstanding. I thought his performance was flawless. 21 runs, 324 meters, a trial line break and seven tackle breaks. You know, he was in everything. You know, that solo try he scored... Like, he's having a very, very good start um, in his fullback tenure. You know, he had a, had a shocking game a few weeks ago, but from that game he played, he was fantastic. I want to see that more from Ruben Garrick whenever he can fill it from Tom Trebojevic. But in the last maybe three weeks, Ruben Garrick has unlocked something in him that I hadn't really noticed or taken into account. He's very quick. If you guys can remember the game against the Eels a few weeks back, mate, he was just lightning. And I don't know, I just thought that, you know, the way he played was just exceptional and, and he really led the charge uh, for the Seagulls. You know, their forwards got onto um, a great roll on. Yeah, and the Cowboys, yeah, just after that 10 minutes, they just struggled. They had no answers. They couldn't 
fight back. Um, Tom Dido really struggled in his first game for the club. Uh, I thought, you know, he's got a lot of work to do. Um, but yeah, look, the Cowboys were just not good enough and the Seagulls just romped them. You know, Marty Tapao leading from the front once again. 20 runs, 208 metres, 5 tackle breaks, 32 tackles in a 55-minute stint. Um, 35 minutes, Kurt Delu or Kurt De Lewis, um, making his debut, 14 runs, 151 metres, 19 tackles on debut. You know, that's a very good debut, very solid uh, for a 35-minute stint as well in your first game. I thought it was a really impressive uh, performance from him. Um, but yeah, look, Seagulls proving that they are they have a bit of life without Tom Chaboyevic, and hopefully they can keep it uh, rolling. I thought they can, I think they can get a bit more consistent with that. That would be good. Um, very interesting, though, that the Cowboys were very depleted a couple of weeks back without some of their forwards. They get their forwards back and to lose 50 to 18. Yeah. Um, I, I don't really have an answer for you on that. I can be quite honest with you. Sharks 19 defeated the Panthers 18. Uh, Sharks got off to a decent start. Tell of two halves pretty much. Got out to an 18-0 lead. Um, but they only got out to that lead because of a very poor defense in the middle. You know, Matt Moylan came out, ran that break, scored the try. Um, and he was a real threat to that side. So sure, Johnson played an unbelievable game as well. And then, But the Panthers' halves really struggled. They've been struggling the last couple of weeks without Lawai and Cleary, uh, just being able to guide around the park. I don't see Tyron, P, uh, Tyron May, sorry, not Tyron PG, Tyron May as a seven. The role he plays off the bench is very good for 20 minutes a game. He is not someone I'd be putting in my starting halves alongside Matt Burden. Matt Burden struggled in the first half. You know, made a couple of errors, gave away a few penalties. And then turned the game on its head in the second half. Really lifted that side and really brought him back into, you know, brought him back to 18 all before Sean Johnson went and, and kicked that wonderful field goal from 35 odd out. But, look, it was good to see the Sharks, you know, kind of keeping it together. They almost lost that game, which would have been disappointing to lose to a side like the Panthers were that depleted. Um, look, you, you think that with a depleted side like that, you know, t- Tigers last week put 20 on them. Um, this week, Sharks could only get just the... Um, feel going for the victory. So, just goes to show the depth in the, in the playing squad uh, with the Panthers uh, and those kids stepping up through. So, you know, James Fisher Harris, 17 runs, 170 meters, a tackle break and offer 27 tackles. A very good performance from him. Once again, just another missed consistent performance from him. Uh, Jack Williams, I thought, was uh, my pick for the Sharks. You know, 12 runs, 167 meters, two tackle breaks and 21 tackles. Uh, Toby Rudolph made 158 uh, meters as well, 16 runs. Um, both being really busy for their club uh, and getting the Sharks to two points, which was really important for them. Uh, Roosters 35 defeated the Titans 34. And look, I would not have expected this scoreline whatsoever. This is probably one of my one of the most entertaining games I've watched. Roosters jump out to a commanding lead at one point, 30 points to four. And then Titans, you know, Jamal Fogarty just really flipped the switch on that. He just, something clicked in when he scored that try. And in the closing stages of the first half, he was the one to bring their side back to where they were. And to get them back from 34 down, 30 points to 4 down to 34 war at one stage to 34-30, leading the side, was a huge effort. You know, Ash Taylor made that half break, popped it into Farsul Malawi, uh, was a good effort as well. Um, they were just really unlucky to, to concede that try in the corner. Uh, the try where Matt Ikevalu scored on the short side. That really should have been stopped. Philip Sammy just kept watching him the whole time, watched the ball get over, and then didn't put in much of an effort to actually make that tackle. And it was a big problem there. You know, that was a game that the Titans really should have won when they got out to 34-30. They really should have closed them out. But Sam Walker, mate, this kid just, again, proving to be the difference maker. You know, he came off the field at one point, um, suffering from that shoulder injury that he's been carrying for the last six or so weeks. Um... He came off for it and then ended up coming back on the field and then kicked the winning field goal. Mate, again, he's 18 years old. Doesn't have a lot of pressure on him to be performing at a tier level. You know, they're looking at him to just perform at his best and he is just killing it. And he's been doing so well for the Roosters. Um, and, you know, when you look at the side like the Roosters, through everything they've been through, to still be sitting fifth on the ladder is really impressive. Um, so good on them. They held on. Um, Jared Rua Hargraves now played his 250th game, another 80 minute performance, 21 runs, 221 meters, three tackle breaks, and offload 42 tackles. But the thing I was really impressed with was him defensively. You know, he in one set or within a couple of minutes of each other, he made two try saving tackles, especially the one on, on Jaden Campbell, which I thought was just 
unbelievable. Just his, his commitment to defense and his commitment in attack, you know, what he's really bringing to the Roosters is, especially in a time where he needs to step up, you know, with um, Jake Friend retiring um, and Boyd Cordner obviously retiring as well. A lot of experience with Brett Morris, you know, these guys, no longer at the club, he's really stood up and he's really been a dominant force, uh, which has been so good to see. Another great performance from Jared Wallace from the Titans. He's been having a cracker year. Uh, 17 runs, 151 meters, a line break assist, a try assist, six tackle breaks, five offloads, and 17 tackles. Very, very busy. I don't know what he's done, but he's, he's done a lot of tweaking to his game, Jared Wallace, and you're really starting to see just how good he's been. And you start to see all year just how important he's been to the Titans side. You know, in a side where they've got, you know, Dave uh, Fafita, Tony Faso, Malaui, Mawiaki, Fodawaka, you know, he's been so good. And starting to bring back the form that really had him uh, in contention and, and playing well for Queensland. Um, personally, I think he should have been there instead of Joel for Hengawi. Um, but that look wasn't meant to be. But, you know, he's doing his part for his club. And as I said, Titans, again, shouldn't have been out losing 30 points to four. But to come back to 34-30 is pretty impressive. But just didn't do enough to hold on. <clears throat> the Rabbitohs 24 defeating the Newcastle Knights 10. Um, look, not bad from the Bunnies. Pretty okay. Uh, you've got to consider that, you know, Damon Cook was being rested. Um, Cameron Murray was being rested. Jai Arrow was being rested. Um, Jaden Sawa and the Troll backed up. Um, and, look, they, they just did enough to get past the Knights, you know, who have obviously been missing a lot of cavalry in the, in the last few weeks. Losing Bradman Best again to another injury. Like, this poor bloke can't catch a break. Um, made it really hard for the Knights. And, you know, you just look at how the Bunnies are performing. You know, you had Benjamin Marshall coming in at nine. Um, you had, obviously, Walker doing his part at six. But Alex Johnston, another hat-trick. You know, he scored, what, 126 tries so far. You know, it's he's just reaching phenomenal heights in his try-scoring ability. You know, the first two tries were pretty easy. But that third try where he's kind of, his whole body was out and then put it in in the corner. I don't know. I kind of love that. I just watched that and I could watch it over and over and over again. Unbelievable from him. Again, with the Knights... They've won five of their last 13. Um, they No, that actually doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, five of the last 13. Um, they've just been really poor. They're missing the influence of Mitchell Pearce. You know, Jake Clifford's come in, trying to do his best. Kurt Mann's been chucked in the centers. Crossland, I don't think he's ready yet. Um, doing a lot of experimenting, but it's just not going the way of the Knights at the moment. Kieran Klaw on the tongue, 15 runs, 133 meters, a tackle break and 30 tackles. Um, big effort from him. Um... And probably the only player that really stood out to me, apart from Alex Johnson, scoring that hat trick. Uh, Rabbitohs obviously get a lot of plays back this week, uh, but good to see them kind of put the Knights away, twenty-four points to ten. Um, and even though it was a really quiet second half from them, they just held on and did enough and did what needed to be done. Uh, the Raiders thirty-eight defeated the Broncos sixteen, and this is the performance and a win that the Raiders really, really needed. Uh, they got their first um, win at home since round one, and. That just goes to show how pivotal it is to have someone like Josh Papali in your side. You know, he just led from the front, obviously being suspended since that hit on Tupelo to Katoa, uh, Magic Round. You know, he's come out and he's been all guns blazing, and he just really came out and dominated and did what he could uh, to lift his side, who have been through just absolute hell on the field, off field. Um, but look, I, I thought some of the players really stood up like, in Josh Papali. I thought Bailey Simonson was phenomenal at fullback. Not sure why they'd be looking at someone like Matt Dufty when you could see the way Ben um, Bailey Simonson played on the weekend. I would encourage you guys to go back and watch just how influential he was in attack and in, and, uh, and more so a little bit in defense as well. Broncos, they, they just don't have enough experience you know, to fight back from any adversity that goes against them. And you could see it again. And it's really disappointing. Um, I've been hearing different things. Uh, where people say to me, you know, the Broncos of last year are playing better than the Broncos of this year. And we all know how bad Brisbane were last year. And people are saying the coaching style of Kevin Walters needs to change. Something needs to be done. And, and that's where Broncos are feeling at the moment. I can understand where they're coming from. You know, they are sitting second last. Most of the year they were sitting last. Um, and they're just not winning games. And they're not, they're just not being able to hold on. You know, they'll, they'll get out, they'll play a game where they play a good 75 minutes and then buckle the last five. In a game like this, where I believe it was genuinely winnable, considering how poor the Raiders have been um, with a lot of their dramas on field and off field, 
It's very poor. But again, if you're not going to have a consistent spine, of course, it's going to have problems like this. Kamako Hunt played his first game in over 4,000 days since uh, 2009. So it's been about 12 years. Very rusty. And uh, you don't blame the guy. He hasn't played the game in 12 years. And by the game, I mean playing first grade. And look, you can't really expect much from him to come in and create wonders. The guy's 34, almost 35. You know, he's just trying to do his part for the team. You know, with Albert Kelly going down at training. Um, and Milford out for the next couple of weeks, and Croft just not being up to that standard either. And I think I think Croft is injured, but even the fact that you know they got Carmichael Hunnin is just is saying a lot about the Broncos at the moment. Um, Josh Papali, as I said, eighteen runs, one hundred and seventy eight meters, a try, a line break, three tackle breaks, three offloads, twenty eight tackles. Just the kind of performance you really want from him. Um, and Tavita Pangai was a standout for me. Nineteen runs, one hundred and seventy eight meters, with a tackle break, six offloads, and twenty six tackles. Uh, I feel like he, he really uh, busts his chops, TPJ. Uh, you can see performances like that. Um, you know, there wasn't a lot of things that he did. It was really stupid. Um, it was a very complete performance from him, and he's slowly starting to repay uh, the Broncos faithful for putting a lot of faith in him. Storm 42 defeated the Warriors 16. And look, Storm now 11 straight wins. Uh, they had the band back together. You know, Cameron Munster came back. Harry Grant came back. You know, they've been out for uh, weeks prior to State of Origin. And they just clicked. It was just beautiful to watch them back all together with Nico Hines and Brandon Smith and Hooker. Um, it was really, really good to watch. Uh, they played at such intensity and just such free-flowing football that the Warriors could not match it whatsoever. Not one of their forwards really made over 100 metres. You know, good to see Fenua Black coming off the bench and making his return after being told he'd be out for, most, uh, for the rest of the year. But the four other forwards really needed to step up, but they just couldn't match it. They really couldn't match the storm, and you could really just see how depleted they were because they just kept defending and defending and defending. And you know, uh, two quick tries at the end to Ken Momalo, um, I thought it was very fitting from him. You know, uh, Ken Momalo has played the last seven odd years at the Warriors. Uh, has played 105 games, scored quite a few tries, um, and was told early in the week uh, that he would no longer be required at the club. Um, and to find another club, sign the three-year deal, and you just see just how much the jersey means to him. You know, a, a guy who wanted to play his career at the Warriors wasn't playing poorly. You know, I thought he was playing really strong. I thought he was doing phenomenal um, for the Warriors. Got dropped for Edward Cossey and Rocco Berry, and no disrespect to those guys, but I'd have a more Marlowe in my team any day of the week. To see how the Warriors kind of treated him and just let him go, um, and you could see the emotion spilling out on the field. You know, he scored that hat-trick and then the uh, once he realized like the last minute uh, where he'd be playing with those boys, he just broke down. And he really just let his emotions go. He really couldn't take it anymore. Um, and he just really showed what it means for him to be a New Zealand warrior. Um, disappointing for the club to kind of, you know, move him on, but it is that is the business that uh, the NRL is at, at the end of the day, kind of to look after their own. Um, but yeah, very um, very sad to see you know someone go out in Kemal Malo. He, he didn't need to go out. He he was put in at Jersey Twenty One uh, just because one of the players pulled up injured. Uh, scored a hat trick. Really reminded the Warriors exactly what he really uh, really is capable of. Um, and I really do wish him all the success in the world at the Tigers. Um, that the Tigers have made a very good purchase there. Uh, but back onto the game. Yeah, he finished off with a hat trick. Uh, played really well in his last game for the club. Um, but yeah, the Warriors are leaps and bounds behind Melbourne Storm and exactly what they want to achieve there. Um, couldn't really tell you the exact standout for me from the uh, Melbourne Storm. You know, for the Warriors, for me, it was Ken Momalo, you know, scoring that hat trick. Is, is it too late? Is it sorry? Is it too early to say that you know they really struggled with that Reese Walsh? The kids played five games, and they really struggled. You know, the Warriors without that spark. And I and I think it's really important to note that Reese Walsh just makes that immediate impact. And that's why he's being considered for Queensland, which I will get to later, which I think is absurd, but I'll get to it later. They really missed that spark, but yeah, everyone from the Storm really killed it. Uh, the forwards, again, laying the platform, but it was really those uh, working in the spine. You know, Jerome Hughes, he's just been on another level. Uh, I just, I look at just how he plays and, and just the energy he brings. Um, I, I read a comment uh, by one of our, our regular listeners, uh, Mick, Mickey Jilwan, uh, who's a big, passionate Storm fan. Um, and he's mentioned how he believes that 
a lot of um, the success that Storm, uh, it's happening at the Storm is on the back of Jerome Hughes and why they're doing so well. And you think in a side like that, you think it'd be Cameron Munster. But if you've been looking at just how well Jerome Hughes has been performing in the last couple of years, especially the last two years, you know, he's really carried that side. And it's very hard to kind of disagree with uh, that point that uh, good old Mickey Jewan made. But, you know, you just got to look at it for what it is. Munster's been a little quiet compared to um, Jerome Hughes. And, mate, this guy has just been in the form of his career um, and he's loving every minute, you know, playing in the halves and just being able to play his own game. It's been phenomenal to watch. Uh, the Paramount Eagles 40 defeated the Tigers 12 at Bankrest on Sunday afternoon. Uh, a bit of a slow start for the Eels. Um, not kind of the start they were looking for, uh, but once they clicked into gear um, and it really took off for them, but it kind of took off really in that second half. You know, the opening 10 minutes where the Tigers were down a player, uh, due to a Simbin, they ran in three tries in six minutes and that just really blew the Tigers off the park. Um, I thought the Tigers were in it in the first half. They weren't playing great football, but they were just blocking a lot of opportunities that Eels were trying to, um, you know, they were trying to get in. Uh, but Tigers, again, it's, it's more of, you know, taking that one step forward and then taking another couple of steps back. You, you can see, you know, for a quality side like the Eels and just how far back the Tigers are from the Eels, it's very disappointing to watch. Um, and the Tigers really need to strive to do better, um, you know, with what they've got. 40 to 12 is not good, especially after the two performances they put on back to back. Um, they haven't won through on the trot since 2017 or 2016. And it's really poor from the Tigers, you know, for the Tigers faithful. I know that many that are going for the Tigers that just sit there and say, when we're we going to be better again? When are we going to be good? You know, with a lot of players leaving at the end of the year, it gives them an opportunity to go out and buy more talent. Um, and they really need to rebuild and, and put their money into proper players to really build that squad to start seeing them back in finals contention. Nathan Brown was a standout for me. 19 runs, 159 metres, line break assist, a try assist, a tackle break, 12 loads, 29 tackles. Nathan Brown played a phenomenal game. He set up two tries in this game, and I just thought, mate, this is just unbelievable to watch. I'd love someone like Nathan Brown in my team. I'd absolutely love, you know, every run he runs like his last. He's offload, he's, he's creative, you know, he's, he's becoming a really creative forward that I love watching play, um, and one that I would absolutely love to have in my side. And uh, the Queen's birthday, Bulldogs 28, defeating the Saints 6. Listen, I'm quite in a bit of shock. We played very good. I can't believe it. You know, it was a very complete performance by us. You know, we made four errors all game. I, I want you to just think about this as I talk. We made four errors all game. We usually make four errors in 10 minutes. We made four errors all game. You know, our forwards really stood up to the Dragons forward pack, who have a very, very good forward pack. And we completed 94%. We completed 44 out of 47 sets. This looked like a whole different side to me. You know, Jake Avrilo really clicked into gear. Um, and he really played a dominant game, you know, uh, halfback really showed what he is, uh, what he's capable of in, in terms of uh, his running game. You know, there's two tries. You know, that he obviously that one he scored, he threw that massive dummy and, and Debellin missed him, um, which was very smart to target Debellin, who's still trying to find his feet uh, coming off the bench. Um, but look, the Dragons just sucked. They were so bad. You know, they made 12 errors. They missed another 30 odd tackles. They've been averaging 33 missed tackles a game. Something ridiculous. Um, Either I could be wrong or they've been averaging 30 points against them again, one or the other. Uh, but still, uh, not very good defensive stats regardless. Um, but, you know, you can't take anything from the Bulldogs. You know, they, they played a complete performance. You know, Adam Elliott played very well. thought he stood up um, and really dominated. Uh, but the Dragons, it's just defensively, they were so soft. You know, Adam Elliott scored this try where there was like five people on his back when he went and scored. Like, you look at it, you think this is like under eight stuff. Or when uh, Jeremy Marshall King, you know, threw that massive dummy and went uh, untouched under the posts. Or even that one where, you know, Jake Avrilo, when he made that break, he gave it to Meany, Meany put it back into Avrilo. Where Avrilo came and he threw another dummy. He threw a dummy to no one and Duffy fell for it, like, com like completely fell for it. There were three Dragons players in front and, and Kotrick was behind. Um, in this game, I, I paid attention as to why there, were, there was so much pressure on, you know, Matt Duffy and why he wasn't being re-signed. And I can understand why Griffin is wanting to get rid of him. He was very poor defensively, Matt Dufty. And last week, I came on here and I defended him. And I said, no, nah, he's got to be in your side. And I still think he has that attacking ability to be in your side. But he really needs to improve in his defense. 
you know, this is a very embarrassing scoreline for the Dragons. Five weeks ago, they beat us 24-16. You know, they really played a lot better than what they've dished out here. Um, and, yeah, Bulldogs get a second minute of the season. Um, takes not that much pressure off him. You know, if we can go back to back and beat Para, oh, dream come true. Believe me, dream come true. Um, but look, you know, Luke Thompson, 20 runs, 167 metres, tackle break, 32 tackles. Uh, becoming one of my favourite Bulldogs players right now. I love watching him play. Love the intent he brings with everyone he takes. It's beautiful to watch. Uh, let's go to news around the NRL world. Um, great news to start off with, uh, can I, uh, might I add. Um, the Warriors announced that they're going to take their round 22 game against the Bulldogs to New Zealand at Mount Smart Stadium, which is really exciting. Um, and really good for uh, the Warriors to go play at home. Uh, it would be a farewell game for Roger Tuvasashek, who may potentially play his last game there. Uh, if things don't get better, you know, um, with the bubble, um, with the travel bubble being lifted at the moment between Australia and New Zealand. On the Warriors, Bunty of Fowler race on to the Warriors to the end of 2023. Would have loved him at the Bulldogs, just with how good he is, or, or how good of a forward he is. Um, but great on the Warriors to keep him there at the club. Storm signed Tepo Mora to the end of the season. Very good signing. Um, an interesting one, you know, Tepo Mora got released uh, from the Waratahs um, and is now camping out with Melbourne at the Sunshine Coast. Um, Eagles and the Seagulls have um, lodged uh, some interest in signing Aaron Woods. Um, Aaron Woods actually offered himself to the Sharks for 180000 and Fitzgibbon said, look, mate, we just want to go in a different direction, which Woods respected, and now is being sought after by Eagles and, and the Seagulls uh, as a decent death signing. Uh, Matt Lodge uh, is no longer heading to the Newcastle Knights, as was reported a couple of weeks ago. Talks with Newcastle broke down, um, and it looks like Matt Lodge will be sticking around the Broncos uh, for the next two years on, on $800,000 a year. Cowboys have announced a re-signing of Ben Hampton to the end of 2022. Um, the Bulldogs have appointed Barry Ward um, as the general manager of their junior leagues program and their pathways. Um, Lotto Land in Brookvale has changed to Four Points Park. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, Kenmore Marlowe being released and signed a three-deal with the Tigers. Very good signing. I back it. Um, and I really hope he plays some wonderful football there and brings some success to the club. Um, bit of an odd rumour. Tigers are considering signing Mitchell Pearce for next year. Um, when rumors like this go around, it just shows the kind of pressure that's currently on um, Luke Brooks. And it's really sad to see just, you know, Brooks is playing, you know, some very, very below average football um, and he's just not working out for him. So to be linked to a guy like Mitchell Pierce, who's in the back end of his career, must be really embarrassing for someone like Luke Brooks to kind of take in. Uh, Storm have been rating the Bulldogs in terms of their talent. Who would have thought? Um, but they're really interested in signing Nick Meany. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the Bulldogs aren't really looking to keep him on, which I think is disappointing. I think he's been very good for us, you know, with the opportunities he's had with us for the last couple of years. But it looks like Brad's going to a different direction, and Craig Bellamy wants to kind of bring him into the side and, and give him a role similar to what Nico Hines is currently uh, bringing to them at the moment. Uh, Nathan Brown has confirmed that the Warriors are very keen to sign Dallin with Tendis Lesniak. Now, talks have been ramping up. The uh, Warriors want the Bulldogs to chip in four dollars to $450,000 um, for the Randall of this year and next year for his contract. Uh, talks are still uh, happening at the moment. And not sure why you'd get rid of someone like Mobile to bring in DWZ, uh, but that's what the Warriors are trying to do. Uh, very, very sad to see that Boyd Cordner has announced his immediate retirement from the game, just to, uh, again, due to too many repeated concussions. Um, he was someone I loved watching play. Um, and he was just a born leader, you know, played the game for about 10 odd years, played for Australia, played for the Blues, won a, you know, won a shield with Australia, won a shield with the Blues, won a comps with the Roosters. Uh, really, really sad to see, you know, being the third Rooster this year, to having to announce his uh, retirement immediately, and the second one due to concussion. Really sad to see. Um, Boyd, mate, all the best uh, in retirement. You know, just looking at all the posts, uh, from ex-teammates and players that they've played alongside and even players that they've, you know, admired from afar. Um, just goes to show, you know, what a genuine bloke you are and what a champion bloke you would have been able to play with and, and what an honour would have been to uh, be alongside you. So, mate, all the best in retirement. Now, good luck to what the future holds. Josh Curran has reached home with the Warriors to the end of 2023. Um, Gareth Widdop has been linked to the Canberra Raiders now that George Williams is looking to go over to Warrington, uh, which would be an interesting signing. Corey Norman was told that he would be no longer required at the Saints. Um, he's come out and responded that he understands. Uh, there's got some good kids coming through the ranks that, you know, he understands that, you know, it's a business. Um, 
I believe that Super League are currently looking at some options there. Uh, the Warriors are looking to make some signings in the halves, but have confirmed that they are not after Matt Dufty, Corey Norman. Uh, but they are looking at trying to sign Gareth Widdop. But due to Gareth Widdop having some issues um, and wanting to go to Australia for personal reasons, I believe he'll be most likely landing at the Canberra Raiders. Um, in the last bit of news, Victor Radley has been investigated for getting kicked off a flight on Saturday. Now, I had a source uh, give me a call uh, just before we jumped on and, and told me a little bit about Victor Radley. Now, um, Radley was seen, obviously, on Saturday, probably after he got kicked off the flight, uh, headed back at the CAS um, with quite a bit to drink. Um, it, not that there's anything wrong, you know, with you know having a drink and, and having a laugh in, in terms of a, um, in a societal perspective, but, you know, for him to have to get kicked off a flight, um, the Roosters officials were saying that he had been um, a little bit loud on the flight in terms of just laughing a lot. Um, I'm not sure if he get kicked off the flight, you know, just by laughing a lot. Just my personal opinion. Um, but look, uh, the anyone integrity unit is aware of what's going on. Uh, when he was kicked off the flight, however, I've been told um, that he didn't cause any issues. He wasn't disrespectful. He wasn't abusive to anyone. He was asked to get off the flight and he did. So, like I said, he's being looked at um, just to see what's going on and and seeing how you know will handle this one with GE. Uh, would be very interesting. Um, now, let's go into all talking points for round 15. The Broncos come up against the Rabbitohs on Thursday night. Uh, Xavier Coates was a late withdrawal on the weekend, is now um, named to play this week, um, which means Dal Copley will go onto the extended bench and Tessie New will start at fullback. Thomas Fregler uh, will stay uh, at lock with Asiata going back to the bench. Um, Keenan Palacia will take the spot of Corey Pay on the bench as well. Um, and Reese Kennedy uh, was then on the extended bench for the Rabbitohs. Damian Cook, Cameron Murray, Gagai, and Arrow return to the starting side. Uh, Benji Marshall has been dropped, um, as well as Peter um, Mamuzelos. And um, uh, Braden Burns, Jacob Host, and Hame Saleh will be the last few spots on the bench there. Um, I'm going to go the Rabbitohs here, and, and the Rabbitohs should beat them comfortably. Um, I'm going to go Rabbitohs by 16 for this game. The Cowboys take over against the Sharks. Uh, Kyle Fell is back on the wing, uh, dropping Justin O'Neill back um, to the extended um, reserve list. Um, Mitch Dunn comes back to the starting side for his own for suspension. Um, Colin Hess will go back to prop. Um, Tom Gilbert will go onto the bench, and Peter Holler uh, will go onto the extended bench. Uh, for the Sharks, CC for Talakai makes his return to the starting lineup. Uh, to take the spot of Wade Graham, he's taken off four weeks. He's had his fourth concussion this year, so he's really putting his health first at the moment. Um, and Teague Wilton will come onto the bench. Um, for the Sharks there. Um, the, Sh the Cowboys really need to bounce back. Sharks are three or four uh, on the trot at the moment. Um, and I'm, I'm going to go to the Sharks to surprise the Cowboys there by eight points. Uh, Panthers coming against the Roosters. Um, everyone is back for the Panthers. Cleary, To'o, Luai, um, and Capo, which is good to see. So Matt Burden will go back to the centers. Tyrone May will go back to the reserves. Um, Luai Cleary back in the halves. Zario back at lock. Uh, Kurt Capo and Liam Martin uh, will take the spot of um, Scott Sorensen and Jermaine Hopgood. Um, well, Isaac Targo will stay in the side. Um, and taking a look from what I can see that's in front of me here, um, William Kikau has not been named due to an ankle injury, which is why Isaac Targo keeps his spot on the, on the side. Uh, for the Roosters, Sam Verrills will uh, return to the side after the eye injury. Um, it takes the spot of Ben Marshke, who has been suspended for two weeks due to dangerous contact. Dangerous contact, sorry. Uh, Joseph Sawali takes um, goes back to the reserves. Tedesco coming back at fullback this week. Um, CC or Takiaho is back um, this week coming back from injury. Um, and Fletch Baker drops back over to the bench. Um, Panthers, I'm going to go Panthers by 14. Be a bit of a comfortable win this one um, to get everyone back. And obviously losing two on the trot uh, is not ideal um, for their side. Now, the Knights will be taking on the Warriors. Um, the Knights get Mitch Pearce back, taking the spot of Phoenix Crossland in the halves. Callum Ponga um, takes the spot of Tex Hoy. Heimel Hunt comes in for Bradman Best uh, on the wing with Inara Tuala going into the centers. And Dave Clemmer coming off the bench. Um, looks like um, the Saifidi Twins will stay starting in the side. Reese Walsh uh, for the Warriors comes back from suspension with two of us going on to the wing with Marcelo Montoya on to the other wing um, and Rocco Berry in the centers with Ken Marlow obviously not there due to him being at the Tigers. Um, Sean O'Sullivan takes the spot of Shino Harris Tevera, who is out for the year with a torn pec. Um, Tavaga takes the spot of Wade Egan, who copped a sickening headlock um, on the weekend. And Adam Fenua Blake will start back at prop with Armel going to the bench. 
And um, Elisa Katar takes the spot of Jack Murchie um, on the bench there as well. A lot of changes for both these sides. Um, I'm looking at a Knights win, getting Pierce, Ponga, Han, and Clemmer back. Uh, I think is very valuable for the Knights. Um, and I think they'll, they'll get the job done by 12 points. Uh, Dragons come up against the Raiders. Both sides named 1-17. to 17. Um, And Zach Lomax has been named on an extended bench uh, for the Saints. Um, I think the Dragons will bounce back in this one. Um, and they'll do it by about 12 points in this game. Uh, the Storm come up against the Tigers. Uh, Nelson Osofa, Solomon, and Christian Walsh will take, uh, come back into the side this week. Tui Kamikameka will go back to the bench. Uh, while George Jennings comes back on the wing and um, Trent Lawyer drops off the bench onto the extended bench there. For the Tigers, Kevin Marlowe will make his Tigers debut on the wing, uh, which will push James Roberts to the centers. With Adam Dwight, he's suspended. Um, and Moses Mboy is back in the side to replace Billy Walters, uh, come back from that knee injury. Um, yeah, going to go to Storm here by 24 points. Um, going to be very comfortable to get a few more props back into the side. Um, and we should see a whitewash um, in this game. I don't see it getting any better for the Tigers. Uh, the Eels come up against the Bulldogs on your Sunday afternoon footy. Um, for the Eels, uh, Mike Acevo has been suspended this week, um, naming 19-year-old debutant Sean Russell um, on the wing. Um, and Keegan Hipgrave comes into the starting side, uh, sorry, to the, the bench, uh, with Bryce Cartwright dropping over to the reserves. And the Doggies take 1-17 to with that win over the Dragons. Um, yeah, look, it's our bank west. I know. I uh, still think you know, we have a chance to be better than we did when we reversed them last time. So I'm going to put my money with Matthews. We're going to stick by the Bulldogs. Love, I absolutely love a win against Parramatta. If we can beat Parramatta, oh, it will just top off the year for me. I'll be very happy. Um, so I'm going to go Dogs by six for this game. Uh, last game of the round, Titans versus Eagles. Moraki Fodoraka comes back into prop with Jamie Jolliff moving back to the bench. Kevin Proctor has been suspended. So Fafeta and Fast Women at will come back at second row and lock, respectively. Um, now for the Seagulls, uh, Tom Javorovic is back at fullback, pushing Garrick over to the wing. Um, Brad Parker to the centers. Um, and Moses Woolley uh, back onto the reserves. Um, and Sean Kepi returns from suspension with Kurt Delu um, back in the reserves. Uh, I'm going to go a bit of a shock here. Um, and I'm going to go the Titans. I know that Javorovic comes back. Uh, but I think the way Titans played... Um, on Saturday and, and not being able to win that game would have been really unfortunate um, but I reckon they can bounce back and be, should be able to beat the Seagulls and do it by about 46 points guys thanks for joining me again another episode of League Chat with the Stat now hats are dropped so make sure you go get a hat for yourself be part of history on League Chat with the Stat As a, again guys share the page like comment subscribe anything you want us to add let us know you want to jump on a guest please hit me up uh, send me a message um, through Instagram or Facebook um, and we can definitely take our time and get you on the podcast with me. Guys, thank you again for your support. You guys take it easy. Enjoy round 15 um, and up the mighty Bulldogs. See you guys. Take care.